Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Anuj. Today I'll be talking to you about mobile money and how technology is helping uh, provide access, banking and financial access, to some of the undeveloped and underdeveloped parts of the world. So uh, in my time with you today, I'll be talking about three things. Why do we bank? A. B. I'll be talking about mobile money a little bit. And then C. I'll be talking about how to improve the current state of mobile money with blockchain. Now, topic three in particular is a very wide topic. And even if I did like 10 different tech talks, I would only cover half of it. So I'm only going to cover a small portion of how blockchain could improve the current state. Uh, I think the solution that I will talk about is can be easily implemented and will result in big changes and um, I guess, uh, you know, will help mobile bankers, you know, users of mobile bank more. Um, so why do we bank? And um, I guess I'm going to sound like somebody from the bank lobby when I say this, but banking, having access to bank accounts and banking does improve lives. Like, for example, if you have... Uh, you know, bank provides you with the easy way to store your money. You can, you know, you don't have to worry about somebody coming breaking into your house and stealing your money. You know, if you travel, you have access to your money. And also, when you don't have money, a lot of a lot of times banks will provide you with form of credits in terms in in the form of a credit card or it could be a personal loan these days as well. Now, a lot of people in most parts of the world don't have that luxury. Uh, this chart, which was put together by McKinsey in their 2016 report shows that a lot of places, a lot of people in some of the more undeveloped places of the world don't have access to any financial services. And these are the people that we call unbanked. As you can see in the first row there, people in South Asia, there's almost 642 million people. That's 53% of the adult population in that part of the world who do not, who do not have access to banks. Um, after South Asia, we have Africa and the Middle East, where almost half a billion people, that's 61% uh, of the adult population, don't have access to banks, so on and so forth. You know. Uh, the usual suspects, Southeast Asia, China, Latin America. So how is mobile banking helping to provide access to, these, to banks, to these people, uh, to the people in this part of the world? And as you may have seen here, I put a picture of a dumb phone, not a smartphone. And it's to illustrate the point that you don't really need a smartphone to have uh, a money account on your mobile phone. You know, in parts of Africa, even before the advent of, advent of any iPhone or smartphones, people had been banking through the phone. And how they do it is, so for example, if, uh, even in these parts of the world, uh, mobile phone for the last 10, 15 years have, has, have had a really high penetration. You know, almost 80% of the people in some of the most poorest parts of the world have a mobile phone. So what you do when you have a mobile phone is you go to a retail agent and you open an account, right? And at that moment in time, you'll get a PIN number similar, similar to your debit card PIN number, which you can use for any type of transactions. So you open an account, go to a retail agent. You don't even have to go to a bank. You don't even have to go to you know, uh, some big city. The retail agent might be just your corner store somewhere, like a bodega or whatever. So you go to the person, give him, and once you open your account, you can give him the cash. You will load the money onto your phone, which is separate from the balance, like it's separate from separate from the balance on your, like, for example, a prepaid SIM. So it's just the money that's stored in an account which you can access through your phone, and you can then use your balance stored, which you can access via the phone, to pay for any number of goods or services. Like if you go to a theater, you can pay for tickets, you know, you just have to give them your details and a PIN number, and then they can charge money out of that account. Uh, so in that way, you know, a lot of people have, been, have had access to, you know, place to store their money for a short amount of time. And also a lot of places, what they have been doing, uh, I guess, uh, some of the more innovative ones, what they have been doing is, say, if you want a credit from the same service provider that gives you your mobile bank, what you can do is you can send a text to a number, request for a loan for a specific amount, and rather than go looking at your credit history, you, what they will do is they'll look at your transaction history and their... Um, in their, you know, in their mobile bank. So, you know, they'll look at all the money that's coming in, the money that's going out. They'll see if any loans that you've taken in the past, you pay that in time. So looking at that history without any credit score, they can then provide you with a credit, a line of credit, which in a lot of places where people don't have access to money, that makes a lot of difference. You know, people can start their business, you know, do whatever that, you know, we, we do with credit cards here. And um, so this next slide will show, like, how big, strides people have made in some of the more uh, undeveloped parts of the world. And I think the chart that I find most fascinating is that global average, sub-Saharan average that you can see there, the green bar in the left, uh, in the right of the screen, which shows that almost in, in, you know, in sub-Saharan sub Africa, almost a quarter of the adult population have not, not just a mobile phone, but also a, mo a money account through their mobile phone. 
compared to the global average of less than, you know, less than 4.5% of adult population. So a lot of these people, places where people would not have access to store their money or banking services now have access through their mobile phone. And this is, and you may have heard about this service called M-Pesa in Kenya, which is, I guess, one of the most well-known. It's the largest uh, financial service provider in emerging parts of the world. Uh, in Kenya, M-Pesa has access to almost 93% of their adult population, meaning that you know 90 plus percent of people, of adult people in that country, have ha have access to banks through their mobile phone with M-Pesa. Now, how will, how does blockchain help? Uh, the you know help people uh, in these countries. So if you think about if you think back to what I said about how the transaction starts, you have to give cash to somebody, right? And the retail agent has to load that money into your mobile phone account. And at the end of the cycle, say you've you know you've used that money for whatever you wanted to use, you've sent that money to home or whatever. And at the end of the day, what do you want to take out? Take out that money from your phone and and you have cash in your pocket. You have to go to another retail agent. Pray that the retail agent has cash at that time, and then, you know, the then he has to, he will just then and then the person can then the retail agent can then give you the cash provided that he has at that time. So how blockchain helps in this effort is it'll help speed up the process and duration that it takes for these retail agents to communicate to like a central office. So basically, what well I guess I should have started with explaining what a blockchain is. So basically, a blockchain is like a distributed ledger. So if you think back to what a bank does, a bank basically keeps records of all the money that you put in, you know, stores that information, and when you want to take out, it looks at its ledger and gives you the money. So what a blockchain is, is basically it's the same ledger, but rather than a central bank storing that ledger, it's distributed across billions of devices, any device connected to the web. So as a result of that, the retail agent now has the access to look up that information more quickly. So for example, if you were, if you went to a retail agent and told him that, you know, you have a certain amount of money, I want to pull that out, rather than the retail agent talking to, you know, somebody at the office and then finding out if that is indeed true or waiting, or for the retail agent to wait for some sort of response from the office, you can directly look at this distributed ledger, which helps speed up the process. So you don't have to wait that way. That's just one of the ways which blockchain could help. And the other way is obviously, you know, the most public face of blockchain right now is cryptocurrency, right? So, which takes away the need for cash. So, because Despite the fact that mobile accounts do exist, a lot of that is still cash-based, you know, because you have to have cash in your pockets to start the process, and at the end of the process, people usually cash it out and take cash in hand. With the cryptocurrency, that takes away, you know, the need to have cash, you know, and which, again, brings all these dangers of you, you may lose it, you know, anything can happen to it. Um, so, yeah, that's it for my presentation. Thank you.